Hello internet and welcome back to my channel Hackathon and here I'm going to go ahead and discuss a very important topic forensics. Now I was going through the CH9 uh, schedule like the uh, curriculum and I saw that they missed out on the forensics of the attacker. Like people using Kali Linux they go ahead and uh, mostly focus on attacking and they forget the fact that they can be attacked and they can be rootkitted as well. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple of tools that will help you uh, to uh, find any rootkits that might be installed. Now the first question is what is a rootkit? A rootkit is basically a program that will go ahead and install a backdoor on your system so that an attacker can go ahead and get access. Uh, now there are antiviruses available for Linux but the rootkit developers or rather the rootkits uh, they are pretty hard to find. To be very honest it's not like Windows like Windows has got malware by rootkit finder that will find the most intrinsic rootkits in Windows but Linux distros does not have that. So uh, the check rootkit is one of the programs that I have that I have been using since Backtrack, Backtrack 5 like uh, almost five or six years ago and it's one of the uh, basic programs that will go ahead and check for the rootkits. So if you do a, a ch uh, check rootkit uh, help you would get all these options. Uh, you can either run check rootkit without any switch or you can go ahead and use any of these switches. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the hyphen n switch because I'm going to go ahead and skip the network the NFS mounted drives like the network file system mounted drives. I'm going to skip that part and as you can see it's going ahead and starting the check and it's going to take a while to go ahead and complete the checking. It's going ahead and checking all the known applications, all the known folders and it's gonna go ahead and then check for the known rootkits. Like there are a lot of rootkits like Bob rootkit, Apache rootkit, Adobe rootkit, a lot of that. So it's gonna go ahead and check those and see if any rootkits are installed on this. Now once again like this is pretty basic after this, I'm gonna go and show you the RK Hunter or the Rootkit Hunter, which uh, ideally should be installed on your system, but it is not. So in that scenario, you'll have to go ahead and do an install, like do an app to get install to install RK Hunter. It's installed on my system, but I'll show you how to do that. Let this thing complete first. Is going ahead and checking LKN right now, bind shell. It has not found anything as yet. And it has gone ahead and completed the scan process, and nothing has been uh, found on my system. Now, let me just go ahead and show you the RK Hunter. Now, to install RK Hunter, you'll have to do an apt get install RK Hunter. It's installed my system so it will not do anything else. So uh, I'll just go ahead and run RK Hunter. Now RK Hunter needs to be run with a switch. So if you hit RK Hunter right now, hit enter here, you'll get a lot of options here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run RK Hunter with a hyphen C switch. See like a lowercase c switch. It do a check on my local file system, and it has three phases. It'll like check the uh, local file system, then it'll check its own database, and then it'll check its own database for any rootkits that might be installed on my system, and then we'll do a malware check. And you can also update the database of RK Hunter using the update switch here. So let's quickly go ahead and do a hyphen C. There might be a few warnings that might come up. 
I'll explain them as they come along. So it's going ahead and checking the system properties right now, like the commands, if the commands are laced or not. At some times, you know, a malicious program might bind itself to a command like a ls command or let's say a ps command. It might bind itself to the uh, command itself, like the command binaries itself. So it's going ahead and checking the commands. It's checking the strings right now. And uh, at this point of time, it has found nothing. Mm. This is forensics is a very important topic because you have to make sure that your system is not rootkeeped. It's not rooted, or uh, like you know, does uh, no one has a backdoor on your system? Because uh, uh, <laughs> that would be kind of like a paradox, to be very honest. And no one wants that. And in Linux. Rootkit hunter like rootkit finders are well. I have not seen that many videos in YouTube uh, discussing this topic, so I thought of going ahead and creating a video to educate you guys on finding rootkits on your system. Now, see, like it has found a warning here. Now, this is my mailer daemon. This is nothing serious because I was uh, trying to configure my send mail. And that's why it's throwing a warning. Nothing to worry about here. It's going ahead and checking all the commands. As you can see, it's checking the commands right now. The next step would be to go ahead and check its own database for known rootkits if they are installed or not. Like, uh, it'll come up right now like in a couple of seconds or so it should come up like it will go ahead and prompt me to hit enter and then you will yeah there we go uh, once we hit enter on here it will check for rootkits and this are the rootkits like it's checking for the ADM ROM it's checking for Ajax kit it's checking for Apache ROM it's one of the bad ones like the Apache ROM the Bob yeah the Bob kit here we go. It's one of the most dangerous rootkits that, well, at least I know of. It's gonna check for a few more, like, fuck it, I'm sorry, F it. Uh, yeah. The name is kinda odd, I know. Yeah. This one. It's gonna look for the shutdown rootkit, the Spanish rootkit as well. Like, uh, pretty much all the known rootkits that are, uh, available in its database and I updated the database today itself so it has got the latest database of the rootkits at this point of time so it's going ahead and checking the system for any installed rootkits so it's checking for the shutdown rootkit as well it has not found that now I would go ahead and uh, suggest you guys to perform these checks at least once a month on your system like you know uh you go ahead and download a lot of tools from github and to be very honest github is a trusted source i'm not saying anything against it. it's running a additional uh, rootkit check right now yeah coming back to that like github is a trusted source but then again just in case if you run any other an authenticated program that might have a hidden rootkit that might uh, spike one of your applications or one of your binaries it's best to go ahead and uh, check that like you know do a check at least once a month on your system now it might throw a few warnings here and there like shared memory uh, warnings and something like that like uh, shared memory, uh, I'll show you when it comes along because I think it will come along in this particular system because I've got a shared chip here. Like if you have gone through the CompTIA A plus uh, uh, certification, you'll know what shared memory segments are. So that particular uh, segment or other, you know, it's two computers which are sharing the same code or rather, you know, other codes of two computers that are s stored on the same chip that's like basically the shared memory shared memory segment 
and that might go ahead and throw a warning we can go ahead and ignore that that's nothing important so it's going ahead and checking for malwares right now uh, it has not found any malwares I'll hit enter it's gonna go and check the network as well and it will find a few uh, you know warnings there because I was testing a few things on my system developing a rootkit so it might go ahead and throw a warning here it's going a uh, throwing a warning on SSH because my SSH port is open I like log in uh, remotely to this particular system at times so that's why the warning is thrown here and here hidden files this particular this is the one that I'm talking about you don't have to go ahead and worry about this one because I was like developing a few things and uh, that's why it's throwing an error here now it took like six minutes and five seconds to complete the check and it went ahead and wrote everything here in this particular log so let's have a look at this like this is a very comprehensive thing like for doing uh, forensic analysis and root cause analysis like RCA in case you know if any rootkit has been found these logs would be very helpful for you so uh, RK Hunter will go ahead and give you the summary of the uh, check that has performed as well and you can submit this to your system admin or if you are part of a group then you can go ahead and send that to your you know immediate supervisor or you can keep that itself for, for yourself and as you can see that it has not found anything here it has pretty much checked everything and my system is pretty much well patched up plugged in so I am not that worried about it but I would go ahead and suggest that you run these commands at least once a month to go and make sure that your system is rootkit free and you are not being bugged. That's it. Like this is to make sure that you are not bugged. Like you, most of the times like people sitting on the Kali terminal forget that they can be bugged as well. This is to make sure that you are not the uh, victim. Like it's kind of like a paradox, but then again, like safer than sorry, right? So that's pretty much it for this particular video. Uh, I thank you everyone for watching and uh, do subscribe to my channel, Hackathon, for more upcoming videos. And do comment on this video and let me know your suggestions. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.